I decided to come to England because being an artist, I always read about all these avant-garde magazines on art and literature and poetry. But as soon as I came here, I started realizing that I had left a paradise down there that really belonged to an organic community. And all this struggle that was being done in Chile for liberation was something that gave me such an energy to live, to exist, to think, to create. And all my paintings came out of that. All my poetry came out of this realization. I thought, well, it doesn't matter that I stay for a year here because there's plenty of work I have to do. But then, after the coup came, you know, and I found out that I couldn't go back to Chile, then it all became something tragic. And it's like all, all the real suffering, the suffering started. It's like they have taken your life out of you. They have taken your paradise out of you. That's it. So now I have to stay in England. According to the generals, now Chile is a free country. But you're free as long as you don't see, don't feel, don't think, don't analyze history or events happening. So you're free to paint uh, or to write whatever does not involve at all history or social events. You know That means that you can do anything that is not political, it's not pornographic, it's not erotic, that means that you are not free at all. I always had the feeling that if I lived in a world of justice and in a world of harmony, then politics maybe won't be necessary. But according to my consciousness, you know, to my social consciousness, I always understood that at least part of my work had to be political, just because it's a matter of responsibility, it's a matter of human, of love, of compassion, of of brotherhood, you know, so I had to do it. Since I was a little girl, I always hated the fact that the Spanish people had come to South America and killed all the Indians. And I felt very much on the side of the Indians, and I always wanted revenge. So once I had the dream that all the Indians finally came together and made revolution and killed the Pope. So that's what the painting is about. There's something very strange, though, with women position, that there is a very strong tradition of women artists in Chile since the last century. There have been quite a number, and for example, you have Violeta Parra, who was a working class woman, and she had practically no education at all. But nevertheless, she was an artist. By the 50s, she started doing research on what was the real folklore in Chile. And she went all around Chile with a little tape recorder, taping all these old men and old women. She learned their songs and started to sing them. So after she died, all this music really started to change the scene in Chile, and people started to hear it a lot. So the new Chilean song was born. That painting is called Angel's Menstruation. Menstruation has always been taboo, and for example, I was not taught about menstruation until it came, so it was a very violent experience, as I tell it, because I, I knew nothing about it until it came, and suddenly I was bleeding, and I didn't know what that was. In Western culture, people are, are not prepared to, fa to face the real facts of life. Most of my paintings, had to do with, with orgasm, which to me is, is one of the greatest experiences. This has got a lot to do with, with a complete way of existing again. Yes, I think that these are the main concerns, love, sex, and Zen Buddhism, and the idea of paradise. Uh, paradise is one of my main concerns. Again, many levels of reality. But all this dream-like life depended on the triumph of revolution, really. You can never have individual joy unless you have social joy, I mean, joy everywhere. <laughs>